Cosmetic family. Thanks for joining us on the Cosmetic Podcast. Cosmetic means being a person or thing that gives rise to a phenomenon that is dynamic or energizing. We're tackling topics and telling the truth. I'm Rodrigo Ross. I'm Keith Vincent. So today we are talking about Fix It For Me. Well, what we're fixing? Everything. All right. So this idea of social innovation. Social innovation. Social innovation and how social innovation can help fix things and and make things better. So ultimately, when you're talking about social innovation, you're referring to the design and the implementation of new solutions, right? Uh Which ultimately aim to improve the welfare and the well-being of individuals and communities. Social innovation. And so it's really given fixing systems, changing some systems. Yep. Uh, so basic things that are already in place, but creating a better system for that so that communities or something can get better. And or it could mean demolishing some systems that are just completely antiquated. They don't work. And it has to be a better way. Because disruption is OK. Disruption is absolutely OK. And actually, I think disruption causes innovation to happen. I, I absolutely think so. So there are many people who who subscribe to the theory that innovation is more than creating. It is also a destructive process. Talk to me about that. So this concept of creative uh, destruction, right? It alludes to the fact that we exist in a dynamic time where things are changing. Have you ever done, you are a football player, you've done dynamic stretching, right? Dynamic stretching. Right. That's the stretching that where you constantly move. You don't like get in a stretch and just hold it, but you're constantly moving and, and this whole idea of things changing and moving. Well, we live in dynamic times. We live in dynamic systems and, and so these changes happen because new ideas and processes take over a current or an antiquated paradigm and they create new ways of doing things, producing goods, services, but the new thing that is created is predicated on the fact you got to destroy the old thing. Sometimes you just got to break it, do something new, it doesn't work anymore. You know, the fact that we don't use steam engines anymore we have like these fancy railroad systems like you have to completely walk away from one kind of technology or idea and and walk completely to something else so just creative destruction yeah you know i think about healthcare, and Hmm. there's many different ways that people are are doing that so there's still today over a billion people that don't have access to health care delivery wow as we look at our world wow so so that's a huge gap that has to be closed some way you know i think about the why in some ways that we're trying to, you know, bring that to the table. I think mm-hmm. about our b- blood pressure monitoring program, for an example. Yeah. You know, traditionally, you go to the doctor to get your blood pressure checked. Yes, right. you can go and, and buy a, a blood pressure monitor now, but also with the program that we have at the Y, not just here in Dallas, but across the country, uh, people are doing this. And that is this ongoing place that your blood pressure is being monitored. You got a kind of a wellness coach that mm-hmm. is walking you through this program yep. along the way. And, and you know, and hopefully you, you, you are monitoring that right there. But it's that extra eyeball onto this, uh, this problem that you may be having. Having, you know, that why, you know, trying to solve that solution. So even further, the idea that you can now take your blood pressure in this really simple thing, mm-hmm. right? Like that mm-hmm. whole machine itself. Before it was this thing, you have to go to school and you have to turn a little knob and you pump the little pump thing and you have to listen to something and do some math and this, this. And that was a deterrent. Like if you didn't have formal training and, and some kind of medical training, you couldn't take your own blood pressure. Now, social innovation, right? right. The, the implementation and the design of new solutions. There are at home, really simple. You just put it on. There are some things you just like stick your finger in. Mm-hmm. Like you could just do whatever and it helps you read your blood pressure and interface locally. You don't have to go to the doctor. You could be at your local YMCA. You could be in a community group. You could be in this this network that you created. That is social innovation. And when you think about that, that, uh, that whole program there, one is uh, creating a few jobs, some additional jobs. Nice. Uh, giving some different skill sets nice. to, to individuals. But I think the biggest thing is that it's empowering people to yeah. to uh, take care of their own health right there. Yep. And they're able to look at it versus thinking about, well, if I go to the doctor, then I got to pay a co-fee, mm. you know, and then he, you know, maybe give me some medicine to go on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like people Every have Every time that, I go to the doctor, yeah. I hear some bad news. I'm nervous. Exactly. So when <laughs> right? you're monitoring your own blood pressure and you got that wellness coach that's 
there with them mm -hmm. and giving them extra things that they can be able to do in order to decrease that blood pressure. I mean, that's a win-win from uh, from all sides, even for the healthcare system overall. Absolutely. Because there's less people that is going to the ER. Right. I, you know, and don't get hung up on like there has to be these really broad categories and there are only a few of them where social innovation can occur. Like, do you know there are so many different types of social innovation? So ask me what types. What types? Oh, glad you asked. So, <laughs> how about socio-political innovation? Mm. That's when you innovate in the space around governance and policies, right? Okay. Like some of the things that are happening in government and politics right now, I would venture to say we probably need some socio-political innovation, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, because the, some of the laws and some of the intent and some of the things that we do in that space may need a refresh based on our current realities and our current livings. There's also socio-ethical socio innovation. Socio-ethical? innovation. Okay. Where you um you use this social innovation technique and ideology around corporate social responsibility. How many businesses haven't really been in that space of here lately, right? This whole idea of corporate social responsibility. I, I would venture to say years and years and years ago, businesses just existed for whatever they did. Like, mm -hmm. I make this widget, I sell this widget, I buy this widget or whatever. But now the, the idea that there is a corporate social responsibility aspect um, to businesses came through this idea of social innovation. How about socio-organizational innovation? Social organizational innovation. innovation. That's a mouthful. It's, it, indeed it was. Um, that's this idea that businesses are intentional about updating and always reimagine, reimagining their practices, policies, and procedures to be the most effective, efficient businesses and organizations that they can be. Hmm. Which, you know, being in an organization sometimes where, you know, sometimes we really hold on to tradition so long that we do some things that is like, it seems like it has to be a better way. Right. <laughs> to do this now like are we still giving out agendas and making packets on all this paper when we probably could be beaming this onto a wall right electronically I'm and not printing all this paper I'm sure you know yeah. like, you think about the board packets that we print out well, you know 41 yeah. pages I'm, mm. I'm sure by the end of the year we we them probably that's about that's about three or four trees there, the two least. trees yeah, there yeah. when yeah. everybody is probably sitting in that meeting with some kind of smart device whether it's a phone a tablet or a right. laptop that you could just be like hey here's the link everyone go on and follow <laughs> in that way yeah so. when i think about um you know it's a gentleman by the name of uh walker walker marsh he's uh in baltimore okay and this guy's kind of like this uh urban change warrior and an so, urban change warrior yeah i like that yeah yeah and so he had lost his job and one of the things he did was begin to plant flowers high quality flowers and herbs mm. and vegetables throughout the inner city of Baltimore. So there are some blighted communities in, in Baltimore. Yeah. And this gentleman wanted to go in and change that. And so, like, let's bring beauty to this place here. Not only just bring the beauty, but it's also this usable beauty also. Yeah. You, know, you got herbs and vegetables that are, that are growing. Um, and so now uh, families can come around that and, you know, they have fresh fruits and, and vegetables and things like that that they can be able to take home. And then wow. also adding beauty to, to the place. Like, we, you know, let's brighten up this place just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then not to mention that um, from the eco perspective, right? Mm -hmm. What that does in terms of possibly fighting pollution and, uh, you know, some of the, the effects of global warming when you're starting to plant more flowers, you have more bees, it's producing more of this. And, you know, even though the urban change warrior looked at it probably from his lens, that real individual lens, there are lots of companies who are getting into that eco social innovation space. Like, for instance, Procter & Gamble, they realized a long time ago that um, there could be really positive implications for families and for their consumers who buy their products if they could switch to washing their laundry in cold water as opposed to hot water. And so they reworked their, um, their products so that hmm. people could wash in cold water 
and they socially innovated detergent based on this and eco a, idea. That's a big one there because that, you know, the goes to his theory of, of you, you you know, you need to wash certain things in, in hot water. Right. No, yeah. you know, you don't. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, we, well, not according to Procter & Gamble. Okay. Right. You know, that, that one and look into that your one electricity bit. bill, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you yeah. have to use the hot water. And, and so I was like, wow. But let me go back to Walker here for a moment because one of the big things about him was he created this company called the Flower Factory. Okay. And what they did was take young people who have been caught up in the juvenile justice system yep. and they in, helped train them to be horticulturalists. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now you got not only that you're beautifying the community, but uh, these young people probably growing up in this community, now yep. they're coming back. Maybe they ran into a little bit of trouble yep. and now they're coming back and making their community uh, beautiful. And so now East Baltimore is now, you know, the, his theme is, you know, one flower bed at a time. But you also got, you know, with him and what he did was bringing back people who live from the community, who are in the community, uh, they're coming back and make sure that place looks looks great. And so, you know, that's uh, another way of just, you know, that, again, that social innovation of change right there, changing yeah, communities. Yeah. As he said, one flower bed at a time. I love it. I would even venture to say, so there is another kind of social innovation called socio-ideological innovation, right? And I would think that he he affected that because not only did he help those young people see themselves, right, in a different space and have different thoughts about, you know, gardening or possibly farming or horticulture or agriculture, he also changed some of the, the perspectives and possibly the ideology that people may have about youth who have been in the, you know, th- that had been adjudicated or been, you know, through some kind of judicial system. So social innovation could just take on so many different. Well, yeah, because it, it's it's solved in you know, like what are those problems out there that are really right in front of us? And a lot of them are basic that we can just add some depth, to, add something to it to be able to change that. And I'm thinking about um, Bike Games of Fort Worth. We partnered uh-huh. with them. Uh, we partnered with them about uh, a couple of times. Love them. And and what they are able to do, they went to the dump in uh, Fort Worth uh-huh. and they said, hey, can we have these bikes? Um, the city was like, no, nah, you can't have those bikes. He said, well, why not? They're at the dump. they you know, in the trash. The and so from the city's perspective, it's like, well, you know, we can't just give away the You the can't bikes. give away trash? It, it, well, that, yeah, mm, that's okay. basically what it is. Okay. So, so what, um, what Bike Gangs of Fort Worth did was they went to the city, petitioned them to say, hey, we'd like to take these bikes off your hand. And so it was able to get that uh, that ordinance change right there so that he can receive the bikes. Nice. And then the cool part is that he is taking those bikes and he has a workshop and he does his own on the side. And um, he's able to now set up these bike programs at different places. He's done it at multiple Ys and they are fixing up bikes. And so the, the blessing and the joy that I was able to see was uh, families came out. Uh, moms and dads and kids came out fixing up bikes that were in the dump because it's, bikes are pretty basic machine if you're talking mm-hmm. to ones without gears and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's about to tighten up here, put a little WD-40 up there, putting on the tires, but he provides all the tools and everything to be able to help people do that. And then he also recruits people who are bike mechanics. So he kind of trained them on the day of, mm-hmm. but also get some specialists in that area for them to help fix up these bikes. But it is parents and kids putting that sweat equity in this. And so his goal is to change the way families engage with one another. Mm-hmm. And so by giving them bikes and they can go out and and, um, and ride in their communities or ride in the park, because after each of these weekend um, setups that he does he also plans an outing for the families to be able to use those bikes right there and then and those type of programs you know are kind of all over the place um, and and then added on to that was he then um, partnered with another nonprofit, and they're doing these bike uh, meetups in multiple um, cities now throughout the, uh, on the East Coast mm-hmm. right now. I will tell you, you know, the first time I came to <laughs> a bike gangs event and I pulled up and, you know, we, we had been in the space of providing bikes to 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 kids and families whether it was christmas time or Mm -hmm. you know a summer kickoff Mm -hmm. or a healthy kids day and typically the way we went about it was that we would petition a place like a a walmart or a target or or some store and like hey you know we're a nonprofit. we want to help this population they probably wouldn't have access to this can you help us out 
and you know, on a, on an amazing, amazing time, you might get 30, 40, 50 bikes, right? But when I came <laughs> to this bike gangs thing, expecting to see that same ideology, that same framework at play, and literally, it was hundreds of bike parts just all over the place. I was like, did did y'all get robbed before the bike giveaway? <laughs> like, was this an act of vandalism? Right. And right. The, and the guy that was doing it was so proud, and he was beaming. He was like, "No, this is the bike giveaway." And I was like, "You sure?" <laughs> I was completely skeptical. And then at the end of all that, it's oh. like these kids are riding around in Man. a and bike. And, and like, how many of us have a bike that's been sitting in the garage for for years? Right. And so like, um, he's collecting those bikes. If so, uh, if you're listening here and you got a bike in your garage, the moral of this story right here is that go and get that. Go give it the bike games. I'm telling you. And you know, I, I think those kids were happier because because some of the kids they had a red seat, a blue body, some polka dot handlebars. And they loved that bike because I picked all my pieces. I picked my stuff. I put it together. You know, they went to the mechanic. They see this one baby ride up. Mommy, we can't go. I got to go to the mechanic. I said, oh. <laughs> well, and the mom told me, oh, well, okay. Let's wait right, on the right, mechanic. Right. Like, it, it was definitely, not to say that the kids who got the brand new bikes didn't appreciate it, but that's a whole different thing. Like you said, that you, sweat equity. You had to put in the sweat you equity. Had, and, and, was, and the kids who just... It. I would say the beam, the beaming look that I saw on their face versus kids that I've seen yeah. at the brand new bikes. I would say the ones with, that gave in the sweat act was just I, uh, the glow that was on the kids' face I because think right. they put in the effort for that. I and, think you. Right. You know, I, I'm I'm not the most mechanic mechanically inclined person. Well, I is. didn't want to say, it, but <laughs> but I helped one family out. But it was oh. the first time that this ten year old had a wrench in his hand. Oh. And just being able to show him how to tighten up, you know, the nuts and bolts and stuff uh, on the on the bike. So excellent. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Keith. You know, I, I, you know, did you, I remember seeing the the dad who, for him, that was the game changer, right? Because it was a pride proposition mm-hmm. at that point. It was like I would absolutely he I, I got the sense he would absolutely go to a bike giveaway and someone would present his kid with a new bike and he would be excited because at the end of the day you just want your baby to have a bike. But the fact that he got down there and he put that bike together right. for his kids and he sat there in that beaming sun with oil and chains and all that when he gave that baby the bike the the look that that baby had for him right because right? right. the whole time the kid was supposed to be helping but they wasn't they nah, were just nah, running they, around but, daddy was in the corner putting bikes together but they also have a program a uh, gentleman by the name of John um, Dingler he also created a program that targeted uh, this bike putting together bikes for homeless people so mm. when you think about you know how does a homeless person get around you know if they are low on the funds you know even a bus pass could yep. be a, a challenge for them uh, but now you know by them ha- being able to have a bike you know they can get they have some means of transportation yep. on some regular basis right. without having to be able to put out money and this uh john john dangler he also did the same thing went down to the police uh, uh pound and was able to you know to get bikes to be able to put together for for homeless individuals i mean that is social innovation absolutely textbook the design and implementation of new solutions that ultimately aim to improve the welfare and well-being of individuals and communities that that's it right there uh at its core good job bike gangs yeah and so i mean what is what is the social innovative thing that you're doing in your your communities uh think about you know we talked about a couple examples here uh today you know there's many different things that you know people can be able to do around the social innovation space. Yeah, and don't be afraid. Get in, get into it. Start thinking about what doesn't work, what doesn't work well, or what, what we know we could do better. And get out there and be innovative. And don't be afraid to be destructive. There you go. Yeah. So, hey, thank you guys for listening to Cosmetic. Where we're talking the topics and telling the truth. Hey, subscribe and listen to us weekly. And don't be shy. Give us a five-star review. And as always, be dynamic, be phenomenal, be cosmetic. <laughs>